Morning everyone, I'm welcoming you to a Clue Giller Reads His Classics and we are in episode number 18. Wait, 19. 19. Um, we're going to take a little breather from below the surface. Uh, one, we're at about the halfway point, so it's a good place to do an intermission and uh, do something a little different for a day. Um, also, with uh, the kind of intensity of the actual story yesterday, it's like I just kind of want to let it sit for a little while. Um, so yeah, we're going to move into something else today. So for the 19th episode, we're moving ahead a few years. So this is um, a writing uh, assignment I had for a creative writing class in college. It's actually dated. So that's uh, November 12th, 1993. So I would have been 18? 19? I don't know. <laughs> 19, I guess. Um, and so this was uh, a writing class. So yeah, let's go ahead and do this. A little bit different, a little lighter, hopefully, than yesterday's um, reading. This one's called The Elevator. The elevator moves slowly up the shaft, the lines tense, never slacking in their job. Inside was a man and a woman. They'd been fighting earlier in the day and now refused to speak to one another. The silence in the small enclosed area of the elevator car was disturbing to both of them. Neither chose to break the ice, even though they were both fidgeting about underneath their heavy winter coats. The temperature outside was well below freezing, but inside the heat was a little too overwhelming. She unzipped her coat and loosened her scarf. Jesus, she whispered as she felt a bead of sweat make its way down her temple. He reached over and wiped it away. She turned suddenly to him and shoved his hand away. Don't touch me, she half yelled at him. They lived on the 13th floor in a cozy one-bedroom apartment. It was decorated to her taste, mostly because she was the first one there. He never bothered to ask her if he could put up a few photographs or posters because he knew she would say no. They rarely had any visitors except when his parents would arrive, without previous invitation. This never bothered her because she got tired of him very easily, and new faces were always a relief. Her parents wouldn't acknowledge her because she was, quote, living in sin. The elevator continued to climb to the 13th floor, barely even moving. Come on, she breathed out as she reached over to press the 13th floor button several times. It won't help any, he offered. Thank you. She didn't look at him. You know, we can't continue to ignore one another. Look, I'm hot and I'm, ti I'm tired and I'm hot. Leave me alone. She looked to the panel, indicating the level the elevator was reaching. Sixth floor. Come on. He moved his hand to the back of her neck and began to caress her skin. I'm sorry. Stop that. She pushed his hand away and moved to the other side of the car. He followed and began to run smooth kisses down her neck. Stop that, she said in a tiny whisper, barely audible. I'm sorry, he again offered. She turned to him and kissed him full on the mouth. He reacted by jumping back and moving to the opposite side of the car. Wait a minute, let's just wait till we get upstairs. He wiped away the sweat from his forehead. Jesus Christ, it's hot. She removed her coat and threw it to the floor. It landed in one of the corners next to an empty beer can and several cigarette butts. She began to unbutton her shirt and move her hands suggestively up and down her body. Let's see how sorry you are. There was a moment of silence before he began to laugh. His eyes started to water and his gut started to ache, diminishing his once obvious erection. Let's see how sorry you are? Oh my god, that's even worse than the one you said in the cab on the way home on Monday. Do you remember that one? You said... I sure could use a ride, and I said, we're getting one. And you said, how about a ride while we're riding, big boy? <laughs> My God, this one really takes the cake. You are so unoriginal. Let's see how sorry you are. He leaned against the wall of the elevator and held his stomach, gasping for air as he continued to laugh. She stood there, her shirt half open and her jaw dropped to her chin. She watched him laugh and hold his gut. She had tried to please him. The tears came gushing out in a steady stream. She fell to the floor and curled in a ball. He stopped laughing and went to her. He, she sobbed into her coat, which she'd retrieved from the corner and held it close to her body. He held her and waited for the panel to announce the 13th floor. He glanced up to the buttons, and then he looked back to the sobbing figure he held. She shook in his arms. Sweetie, I'm so sorry. I love you, okay? She stopped shaking for a moment and looked up to him, her eyes red and swollen, and mascara running in long rivers down her cheeks. I want my mother were the only words he could understand before she started sobbing and shaking again. Let's go home and I'll, I'll make us some dinner. We'll stay in tonight. How does that sound? The panel above the two huddled bodies indicated the 13th floor. A loud bong sounded. He lifted her up and carried her to their 13th floor door. He unlocked the door, turned the knob, and pushed the door open. She continued to cry on his shoulder. 
He set her down on their large bed and went to the kitchen to get her a glass of water. He undressed her and tucked her into bed. She looked up at him and smiled. He smiled back and kissed her on the forehead, tasting her beauty. Good night. Their favorite song played on the radio that night, Put Your Head on My Shoulders. She loved him. He loved her. Kind of a nice, sweet little piece. Um, there is a notation from my creative writing uh, professor. This last paragraph doesn't echo the way it needs to, but up to that point, I think the story is very, very is underlined strong. Um, so yeah, this is a nice little breather from below the surface, which I think we'll get back into tomorrow. But again, consider this an intermission. Um, so that's kind of it for today. So I hope you guys will return tomorrow for a 20th installment, if you can believe that. Um, until then, let me uh, once again close with the quadruple S. Stay safe, stay smart, stay secure, and stay well stocked. And uh, until tomorrow, um, be well, you guys. Bye-bye.